Before we begin our exploration of any spelling system, it will be helpful to establish the sound system that was taken as the basis for its design. For our purposes, it will be enough to describe the phoneme inventory. A phoneme is the basic unit of sound in a language, although the precise pronunciation of each phoneme may vary somewhat according to context, such variation rarely enters the conscious awareness of native speakers, and the different variants of the same phoneme are treated and perceived as identical. It is worthwhile to note the difference between a phonemic code and a phonetic code. A phonemic system only distinguishes phonemes from each other, while a phonetic system also distinguishes the contextual variants of an individual phoneme. In other words, a phonemic transcription makes only those distinctions that a native speaker finds meaningful, while a phonetic transcription provides a deeper level of detail that better serves scientific rather than communicative purposes. RLS is a phonemic system, not a phonetic one. The phoneme inventory assumed for the design of RLS is deliberately broad enough to easily represent three main accents of English. The first two are British Received Pronunciation, or RP, the traditional standard in the United Kingdom, and General American, or GA, the traditional standard in the United States. While there are certainly other dialects, and no single spelling system can perfectly accommodate them all, RP and GA are the two most widely understood, respected, and emulated. The third target accent is a roughly neutral hybrid of RP and GA, which is recommended by the designer of RLS as the hypothetical basis for international standard RLS spellings. It essentially combines a British vowel roster with American roticity. What is roticity? Well, a rhotic accent pronounces the R sound in virtually all positions, while a non-rhotic accent reliably drops the R sound whenever it's not immediately followed by a vowel. In a nutshell, the proposed hybrid accent makes all vowel distinctions that a typical British speaker would, but includes an audible R sound everywhere a typical American would. From the perspective of any individual English speaker, spellings based on the hybrid accent would not always match his or her own pronunciation. Even so, such regional deviations would be far fewer and further between than the multitude of largely universal deviations that characterize traditional spelling. Plus, by compromising between the two most influential accents worldwide, we can likely spread those discrepancies as thinly as possible across the broadest proportion of the English-speaking world. So, let's begin with the monophones, or simple vowels. All phonemes from here onwards will be uniquely identified using symbols from the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, delineated by slashes. The seven short vowels in RP are represented by the blue letters in the following words. Put, pet, pit, pot, put, pat, protect. The five long vowels in RP can be heard in these words. Pa, per, pee, paw, poo. Although for British speakers like me, the vowels in pa, pot, and paw are distinct and separate phonemes, virtually all American speakers merge at least the first two if not all three into a single phoneme. The sound of the O in protect is called schwa, the generic and nondescript vowel that very commonly occurs in unstressed syllables. It's also a component of three diphthongs, of which there are eight altogether in English. A diphthong is a sequence of two vowels in which one blends seamlessly into the other within a single syllable. Let's refer to the diphthongs ending with schwa as schwaphongs. Examples from RP are found in these words, tear, tear, tua. In addition to the three schwaphongs, there are five more diphthongs in English. They are represented by the blue letters in the following words, time, town, tame, toy, tone. That's right. Three of the five so-called long vowels you probably learned about in elementary school, specifically the long A, long I, and long O, are in fact diphthongs. You have the great vowel shift to thank for that. Rhotic accents tend to have a class of rhoticized vowels, which we'll just call rhotics. A rhoticized vowel is a combination of a vowel and an R sound in which the R sound blends into the preceding vowel and at least partially merges with it. The four simple rhotics in GA can be heard in these words, part, per, port, perhaps.
In particular, the vowel in per is always rhoticized in GA. Since schwa can be rhoticized, so can the schwa thongs, and in fact, much like the vowel in per, they very rarely if ever occur without rhoticization in GA. Let's call these combinations rothongs. Examples include these words, tear, tear, tour. Finally, the consonants of English are sampled in these words, read in rows, bat, pat, van, fan, either, ether, dime, time, zone, zone, genre, shot, job, chop, guild, kilt, help, map, nap, bang, rip, lip, yet, wet. There may be a few surprises here. You may have noticed that there are in fact two different th sounds. They differ from each other in the same way that, for example, V and F do. Also, the sound the G makes in genre is not the same as the more common J or Z sound. This phoneme occurs more often in the middle of words such as leisure represented by an S. Leisure is not leisure or leaser any more than leash is leech or lease. Going forward, I should note that all sample words you see in RLS will be spelled according to the hybrid accent, regardless of the presenter's native dialect, unless otherwise stated. With this foundation, you're now ready to dive into RLS itself.